My name is Trudy Logan and I'm the founder and CEO of Arrhythmia Alliance. Arrhythmia Alliance is a collaboration of patients, caregivers, healthcare professionals and policy makers. And we want to bring to you today education so you can better understand living with arrhythmias. I'm delighted to welcome Professor Hugh Colkins, Medical Director of Arrhythmia Alliance. Uh, Professor Colkins is based at John Hopkins in Baltimore. Welcome, Professor Colkins. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Julie. It's good to be here. Thank you. Um, I have a variety of questions for you from our panel. Uh, a lot of them very worried, very anxious. So if we could just go through them, and I know your expertise will be invaluable in reassuring uh, the patients. Moving on to inherited cardiac arrhythmias, just how common are they? Well, inherited heart conditions are quite common probably in one in 400 of the general population. And when you think of inherited heart conditions, you have some that we won't really focus on, cholesterol problems, blood pressure problems, coronary artery disease, all those things sort of run in families where if your father had heart attacks at a young age or had hypertension or high cholesterol, that may be a genetic factor. But when it comes to heart arrhythmias and things that a cardiac electrophysiologist would think about, you know, it's probably one in 400 patients have a inherited rhythmogenic heart condition. You know, the most common is hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. That's a, or a thickening of the heart. And, and that occurs in one in 500 of the general population. So that's really quite common. Now you compare that with a condition like arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy, that's one in 5,000 of the general population. Long QT syndrome, which is a, a sodium or potassium channel abnormality is probably one in 2000. So these are not common condition, but they're important conditions because they run in families. And if your mother or your father happens to have one of these conditions, there's a good chance it's gonna be passed on to you and you need to be aware of that and, and seek proper management and treatment of the condition. What is CPVT and is it recommended for a child to be fitted with an ICD following the diagnosis? So CPVT is catecholaminergic polymorphic VT. So it's a type of arrhythmia that's a lower chamber arrhythmia that's very fast, very chaotic, that can cause you to pass out or have a cardiac arrest. And it's triggered or driven by adrenaline. And this is a condition where defibrillators really are not helpful. Because if you have a defibrillator and it gives you a shock, you have pain from the shock, more adrenaline's released, and the arrhythmia recurs immediately. So CPVT, you treat with beta blockers or flecainide or medications, and you're very unlikely to put a defibrillator in, and, and a defibrillator is not likely to make a big difference. Thank you, Professor Calkins, on behalf of Arrhythmia Alliance and all our patients for providing this valuable information. Thank you. Great, thank you, Trudy. Take care. 